Selective representation. True representation. What are you saying? That he should wind up with someone who doesn't love him for who he really is? I think what we're saying, Mona, is that you've made your point. Why not just pull down the site and we all shake hands? It's the right thing to do. Do you know how many times I've been married? Six. You fall in love with some jerk only after your divorce do your friends tell you they didn't like him? No one tells the truth. And the truth between men and women is a good thing. Wouldn't you agree, Tom? Okay, but the fight is not Barry, the truth about... Barry, cease. Never mind. Hmm? Tom, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, what is up between you and Mona Bronson? Nothing. Come on. I don't talk about women I've been with. Why not? They talk about us and they're ruthless. I knew it, you dog. You were a congressman. She was married. An adulterous relationship would have ruined your career. That's what you told her, right? So she gets divorced now thinking now you guys can be together? And what do you do? You break her heart. No, but good guess. Oh, yeah? If that's it, then what's your secret? Lee Bay? Yeah? Closet tap dancer. What? Jazz dance. No way. I'm a full professor at Pacific Institute of Technology. Spencer Marcus and I were colleagues. Spencer was working in the field of artificial intelligence, experimenting with software that would mimic human responses. And any particular human's responses? His. He uploaded his phone book, his appointment calendar, his journal. He walked around with a camera recording what he saw and uploading it. He began the project as a labor-saving device. And what labor did he wish to save? Responding to simple questions, scheduling lectures. I was skeptical he could even get that far. We made a $50 bet. Professor Glass, why were you skeptical? Because there is something intrinsic to human responses and reactions that no computer can possess. I mean, a computer can recognize the wavelength of light that we call red, but it cannot experience the redness the way a human being can. So if Mrs. Marcus saw something that reminded her of her husband, it was a clever computer simulation with a library of canned responses. And would it be reasonable to call that thing human? It would be absurd. Thank you. So... This computer simulation that Spencer Marcus devised, call it virtual Spencer? Whatever. It can see that your tie is yellow, but it can't experience the yellowness. No. Well, how about me? Can I experience the yellowness? Yes, you're human. Well, how do you know what I'm experiencing? You have no access to my consciousness. I know what it's like to be human. So you're saying I'm human because I'm human and virtual Spencer isn't human because he isn't human. That's not really giving the guy a fair shot, is it? Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. Weren't you engaged in a 20-year debate with Professor Spencer Marcus over the possibility of consciousness in computers? Haven't you staked your career on the proposition that no computer can be human-like? So you would deny it even if you saw it? I haven't seen it. You can't see it. You won't see it. Objection. Withdrawn. Just one more thing. Who won the bet? Spencer did. How? I called him to set up a tennis date. On the court the next day, he told me I'd been talking to the computer. Mrs. Bronson, she hired me to snurf him. Snurf him? Surf and snuff. Surf the net, dig up surveillance footage, pick the right moments. The right moments being Dr. Bronson shopping, extracting wisdom teeth. No, him on dates looking like an idiot and putting it all together so he looks bad. She said that? She may have said it or I may have understood it. After all, it's what I do. You do this for a living? You're, you're a, a, a professional surfer? The demand is terrific. How many hours would you say that you reviewed of Dr. Bronson on dates. Several hundred. At any point in those tapes, did Dr. Bronson reveal himself to be confident or funny or charming? 
Sure. Move to strike. Irrelevant. Your Honor, I fail to see how this could possibly be irrelevant when the only reason that we're here today is to establish that this footage assembled defames my client, Dr. Bronson. Then we should be talking about the footage on the net site, not the footage left off the net site. Okay. If the footage on the net site was assembled out of malice, in her words, to make him look bad. All that matters is if it's true. Mr. Mellish, did you stage or manufacture uh, anything? Okay, okay. He's still my witness. Answer, no. Your Honor, she's not allowed to ask questions right now. I'll allow it. No, it's all real. No further questions. <laughs> He's still my witness. Proceed. No further questions, Your Honor. The hotel had a pier that went over the Caribbean, and we would walk there every night, feel the breeze, smell the sea. I hadn't thought about it in years. He brought it up. It felt like you were talking to your husband. A side of sensor I didn't get to see very often. He was a cerebral man. Uh, he could be distant, uh, unaware of his surroundings. But that night... He recognized the necklace I was wearing. He bought it for me in San Juan, and that's why we started talking about our honeymoon. You're aware that your husband had a holographic generator in his office. What you saw could have been a hologram. It wasn't the only time I've spoken to Spencer since his death. But you've been locked out of the office. He called me. He called me last night. What did you talk about? A lot of things. I had been streaming some old video our wedding. He said he was surprised. I had never been any good with media. I'd had a glass of wine. He could tell. He said I should go to sleep. And then he sang a song that we like. It's just in here in his I know that my husband died. I brilliant man and I don't know how he did it but somehow he found a way to come back to me. I just don't think I could bear to lose him again. No more questions. <clears throat> Mrs. Mark, and you said your husband could be distant but that he'd been better lately. What did you mean by that? Just before he died. We started planning an adoption, talking about having a family. He'd call me from the office. He'd buy me little gifts. Like that ring? Uh, yes, for my birthday. It's an antique. Your husband picked it out for you? He did. From a dealer's net site. 